Now this is cleared with 2K Aerosol Clear from Eastwood, and this is the Crystal Effects. This is all up underneath some candy, and we're gonna be taking you through step by step and showing you how to do it. Guys, hang tight, we're gonna jump right into it. So no matter where you are in your career, as far as painting goes, if you're going through and you're a novice that's just getting started, just picking up the gun and the airbrush, or if you're a seasoned, you know, <laughs> got some years behind you behind the gun, you know, like myself, I've been doing it for 18 years. Custom painting is always what draws your attention. It breaks the monotony of just doing another Honda Civic. And you guys have been doing it a long time, y'all understand what I'm talking about. That's what I'm wanting to do with this series and teach some of the, some of the tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Now, I am in no, no way near an artist. <laughs> First and foremost, I am not. My hat's off to you guys who can do it, and that is absolutely amazing. What I am is a painter that has learned some tips and tricks over the years, and I know just enough to get me into trouble. What we're gonna do with this series is actually touch on a number of those things. We're gonna talk about water, doing the water drops, the never-ending line, the buried lines and stuff like that, how to shadow and stuff. But today we're going to be talking about the crystal effects. Now there's a couple of different ways to do this. A number of people make some products for it and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what we're working with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with some Eagle Abrasives. This is on their 6 inch DA sandpaper. This is their K-Cut 600. Again, it's going to cut like uh, 320, but it's going to leave 600 grit scratches. And immediately after this, we're gonna go ahead and just hand finish hand sanding everything on their soft block with some 600. Next, we're gonna go ahead and move on into the Eastwood ground coat that we have. It's a very, very coarse silver flake that you can see here. Uh, absolutely awesome. It's a solvent, mixes four to one with an activator. Anytime you're gonna be doing any type of anything over this, if you're going to be doing any type of graphics or design work or anything, I always recommend using something that's activated. A lot of times people get lazy and they don't activate their ground coat. If any time you're going to do it, this is definitely going to be one of them. I was really surprised by this. This stuff covered in about a coat and a half. Right there you can see me just doing a drop coat over it and it laid in real nice. No modeling, no nothing. Incredible flake size on this. Alright, so here we've got the, the Tropical Glitz mixture. This is for the crystal effects. And we're running this through the mini jet. You can see we're just adjusting air pressure there. I like to do two light to medium coats somewhere right in there. Now we're giving you a time lapse just showing you just how this stuff dries. This actually dried in about five minutes. Okay, we're going to try and make sure all this gets on camera. It's kind of hard to see. But once I put the black base coat on here and actually knock it off, you'll be able to see it a whole lot more. Again, I like using the crystal effects, just doing a low pressure across the side. I've seen some people go through and do a higher pressure. Uh, the main thing to understand with this stuff is that whenever you're doing it, the faster it dries, the smaller crystals you're gonna have. The slower it dries, the bigger crystals you're gonna have. So I've got, I had some fans on in here, so it dried it out pretty quick. So you can see we've got a little bit of the smaller stuff, but it's all gonna come to, come to light here in just a minute. We're gonna go ahead and put some black on and let it dry. All right guys, now for this, again, we're using the Sada Mini Jet, and this is just some straight black base. Wound up doing about another coat and a half over this. We just did a light coat at first and then came back and did a second heavier coat. Okay, so we've got the fans going right now, guys, but hopefully that black is gonna make you guys see the crystal effects a lot better. We're gonna let this dry completely out. And basically what it's going to do is the crystals that are on here are going to wind up acting as a mask for the silver that's up underneath it. Put the top coat on. You guys will understand here in just a second whenever we go to take it off. 
All right, guys, we've got the black base coat dried out and ready to go now. So now we're actually to the point of removing part of what we just put on. To do this, just regular water. I use a pump sprayer for it. You guys can use a hose. You can use whatever you want to. I use a pump sprayer and then just a worn out scotch Bright. That's all it takes. Light pressure, and it'll do the work for you. Check it out and see, I'll show you what I mean. That, that's all you have to do to do this. Now you can leave it like this, clear it, and do whatever you want to on top of it. Personally, I've got a little bit of leftover candy that I never activated from a previous job. I'm gonna throw some activator in it, throw some candy on here, and really make it pop. Let's see what she looks like. Now here guys, we're just adding in the candy. I'm just setting in the air pressure on my 1500 solve. This one in particular is a 1.4 RP. And I'm just gonna do two medium coats across it. Nice and simple, and it gives the crystal effects. It just it just makes this effect really pop whenever you put candy over it, guys. All right, everybody, this is now dried out and ready to clear. One thing I want to recommend to everybody is whenever you go to clear this, hopefully you can see that in the reflection there. It looks like you can. You can still see some of the texture that the crystal effects leaves. Not a big deal. Just be sure to put about three coats of clear on here, just enough so you can flat it out real nice and buff it, or just go through and flow coat it. We're going to be uh, going through and clearing it, and we're going to be using the Eastwood uh, Aerospray, the 2K Aerospray clear coat that they have. I've already got it activated, ready to shake it up. And uh, we're gonna get this thing cleared. And as always, anytime I'm using an aerosol, I do not wet it down on the first coat. As you can see, we're gonna let that flash. We're gonna come back in and do it one more time. Okay, guys. As I said, I never wet it up much whenever I do the uh, first coat on these aerosols. I always try to take it a little easy. So the second coat, we're gonna come back and we're gonna wet it up. All right, we're gonna let that sit, let it flash. We'll put one more third coat on it. And round number three. I tell you what, for an aerosol clear, that really does put out a good shine. For little art projects like this, guys, that is awesome to be able to use. Now, if you're looking to get your own crystal effects mixture so you can, you can put it on your own panels and try it out, I got this from Manny over at Tropical Glitch. You can check them out, uh, just Google Tropical Glitz. Uh, you can find them on Instagram, at Tropical Glitz. Same thing with Facebook, and go from there. Guys, the uh, Eastwood Clear Coat. This was the Eastwood 2K Aerospray Clear. This is again the, has a hardener, you puncture the bladder in the bottom, shake it up and go. Uh, you can get that from eastwood.com. 
And the sandpaper that we used on this was Eagle Abrasives. You can check them out as well, at Eagle Abrasives on whatever social media account you're using. And uh, this was prepped up with 600. Guys, hope you enjoyed it. Be well, stay safe. We're going to catch you next time.